last time we saw how a CCCV regulator helps to charge a battery and the battery charging cycle using the CCCV method. Hello guys, this is Foolish Engineer and this time we'll see the control mechanism of a DC to DC converter where we'll see how a converter shifts from constant current sourcing to constant voltage supply or vice versa. And the interesting part is it is all dependent on the basic Ohm's law. And after that, we'll see the simulation of a CCCV regulator. So let's start. For our CCCV regulator, we'll use a buck topology and its control strategy, which steps down the input voltage to provide regulated output. This is the circuit diagram of the buck converter having a MOSFET, diode, and an LC filter at the output. The charge controller of this buck converter gives PWM signal to this series bus MOSFET. By controlling the duty cycle of this PWM, we can change the output current as well as output voltage. Just like magic. Let's see the easy CCCV converter where the voltage supply is given at the input so that it will become easier to understand the complex logic of the battery charging algorithm. Well, we need to control the output voltage. To do that, the controller should know the value of the present output voltage, right? So to get that piece of data, we should add a voltage feedback from the output by using a voltage divider of two resistors with reference to common ground. The middle point of this regulator is given as the voltage feedback to the controller. The R1 is the upper resistor and R2 is the lower resistor. This voltage feedback is compared with the reference voltage by a comparator. This comparator acts as an error amplifier. So the constant voltage threshold for our regulator is fixed by this voltage divider. The converter will clip the output voltage to the maximum value where it is designed in this network even if there is no load. And secondly for current regulation also, we should know about the present value of output current. Well, the required current will not flow through the circuit until and unless we add a load to it. For the application of a CCCV charger, the load will be our battery. Now, we need to take the output current feedback from this converter. So we can take this current feedback by adding a shunt resistor in series with the load current path. When the current flows to the circuit, the signal from the both terminals of the shunt resistor are provided to the error amplifier present in the controller. Again, Ohm's law comes into picture. The voltage drop across the resistor is directly proportional to the current flowing through the circuit. So after measuring the voltage drop across this resistor, we can clearly determine the current flowing through the circuit. This voltage drop is compared by an error amplifier with an integrated low reference voltage. Well, this reference voltage is different from the reference voltage which is used for the voltage regulation. So this resistor decides the value of constant current clamp. In the constant current mode, the current doesn't exceed this program limit. So these two error op amps ensure the accurate voltage and current regulation loops. But there should be some synchronization between constant current and constant voltage, right? So the amplified errors of both comparators are all in the CCCV controller. And the resulting signal coming out of it is considered as a reference for the PWM generator, which says the switch in duty cycle of the series pass MOSFET. This PWM generator consists of logical circuit and a comparator which compares the signals between a sawtooth wave oscillator and the resulting or errors of both amplifiers. The output of this comparator is given to this logic circuit which gives necessary PWM signals to drive the high side MOSFET transistor. Well, this is how a basic CCCV regulator or a battery charger works. To get the precise charging control which performs the trickle charging of the battery, a more complex control mechanism is used. But the basic control strategy is based on this only. Well, I think you understood this. Now, 
Let's see the simulation of a CCCV buck converter, which will give us an exact idea how a CCCV converter works. For this simulation, we'll use the LT3741 DC to DC synchronous tape down converter. Well, actually it was very easy to do it, that's why I chose it. There is no specific reason for that. A synchronous converter controls two transistor switching elements. So instead of a diode, we use a MOSFET as a second switch. This buck converter consists of two MOSFETs, output inductor and a capacitor. Other peripheral components are necessary for this IC for compensation, switching frequency selection and many more. Which is not important for us right now. The input voltage we have given is 30 volts and we have designed this converter to get 20 volts constant output voltage and 2 ampere constant output current. So no matter what happens, this converter will not exceed these values. Here we have calculated the value of this current sense register such that it will not go beyond 2.5 amperes even if there is any change in load. Well, we have done the all calculation of this converter for this required output. R1 is the current sense register. This is the filter circuitry to remove the high frequency noise. R4 and R5 is the combination of voltage divider which decides the output voltage. Well, we don't have a battery to simulate this application. So we'll use a load register to simulate it as a battery. Initially, we'll simulate our circuit with full load. That means we'll keep the resistance to check whether our circuit is properly working at full load condition. So the load will be of around 10 ohms, which is again by ohms law, 20 volts upon two amperes. Let's simulate this circuit. If we see the output waveforms, the output voltage is nearly around 19.7 volts and the current is around 1.97 amperes. From this, we can say that our circuit works fine at full load condition. Now, we'll increase the load resistance up to 20 ohms. In this case, the load voltage should be constant and theoretically, it should not go beyond 20 volts. To achieve this, the load current will be decreased by the controller. Now, if we see the simulation, the voltage is limited up to 19.8 volts only. And to do that, the current is limited up to 990 milliamperes. See, our assumption was right. Ohm's law never disappoints us. To ensure the constant current, will decrease the load resistance up to 5 ohms only. In this case, the output current should be constant and theoretically it should not go beyond 2.4 amperes. And to achieve this, the output voltage will be decreased. Now if we see the simulation, the current is limited up to 2.4 amperes and to do that, the voltage is clamped at 12.14 volts. Finally. We'll change the input voltage from 30 volts to 35 volts and keep the resistance at 10 ohms. So here the output voltage should be around 19.7 volts and current should be around 1.97 amperes as per our earlier simulation. Let's see the simulation now. Well, the simulation results are the same providing 19.7 volts and 1.97 ampere load current. Nice. It's all going according to our plan and calculations. Well, that's how a CCCV converter works as a battery charger. I hope you got all about constant current, constant voltage, a battery charging mechanism, and its basic control algorithm. If you haven't, you can watch the video again. Still, if you don't, you can ask your doubts in the comment box below. Hit the like button if you liked this video, subscribe to my channel, and finally, Thanks for watching.